Hello, my name is Rob Bannister and I'm here to show you the updates to Edge. The version I'll be going through is 6.8. You can find help on my site at bannisterpost.com. If you click on that help button in the info, it'll bring you here. I'll update this to 6.8 so you can download it here. You can also download it on Nukipedia. And I'm going to update with this video and all of the documentation as well. One of the biggest changes to Edge is the exponential Edge Extend and the dynamic Edge Extend, which I'll go over today. The other big thing that I've changed is the labels, and I've gone through and documented each little tooltip. Um, so this should be a more refined version of Edge, as opposed to the old one. Uh, one big change is I changed the tabs up here from controls and color, because a lot of people didn't really understand what was going on in these to extend, which is where you're going to do your extension, and blending, where you're going to do a lot of your blending um, from your background and your semi-transparent edges. Starting from the top, we have the channels drop down, so you can um, adjust edges on CG passes or anything like that if you need to. Uh, operation set to intermediate by default, so you can see what the actual edge extension is doing. And if you go to final, uh, it'll merge it over the background and pre-multiply it and everything. If you see something like this, it just means your edge extension isn't going out far enough, and I'll show you how to adjust that in a second. You can preview your edge mat. So this is the mat you'd use to regrain your edges because you're extending them. And you can create that here, or uh, it's available in the channel set. If you choose to extend chroma only, you'll see that it just extends the color information and not the luma information, which could be useful. Exponential edge extend, you'll see it makes this little cone. It blurs uh, additionally a little bit more as it extends out. If you have a pre-multiply above the edge tool or the edge node, you'll see you get this dark edge so you can say it's pre-multiplied and it'll fix that. And you can clamp your alpha if your values are above one and zero. So to get into Edge, you can define your slice start, so how far in you want to start. Slice iterations will duplicate or replicate the process in which it's doing this edge extension, and it will, without blurring anymore, it will extend it further out. The slice width is the blur in between each one of the slices. So as you increase that, it will get progressively more and more blurry. And then obviously the exponential will still blur more as it moves further out. Further down is where we do a lot of the blending. It's a little easier if I just blur this a lot so you can see what it's gonna do. So you can see that we have this little edge here, and we can soften the transition of it. You'll see it more in a practical example. Edge blur, blurs from the outside in, and then smoothing kind of obliterates detail. Then you can mask the result. This currently only works with the final result. Uh, and not the intermediate. I'm looking at a, a good way to implement this and what we actually want to see from masking it. Uh, for now, my method is keeping the original. So if this was merged over the background, and then this was your edge extension, which is the final. Make sure it's far enough out. And then I would just use a key mix. to define where that extension needs to be because you really don't want to just edge extend everything. You should be isolating it to the areas that need it. And then down here you can create that edge shuffle so you can use it as a mask to regrain the edges that got extended. In the blending tab, this is turned off by default. As soon as you enable it, you'll see 
as well. Um, you'll see that the color comes through. If you preview the edge that we're using, you can expand that edge inwards and soften the fall off of it. Also, you can mix the foreground, the luminance, so that it's just the color. So you can see that kind of makes a better blend. Here's the operation of the merge, so you can change it to whatever you like. And then the mix down here will mix that result. You can blur the background, which is set to zero by default. Um, but what happens there is it looks like we're transparent. So if you blur the background, it will fix that uh, transparency. Adjusting the background color, we can gain that result up or down and adjust the saturation. So I've been playing around with this, so some of these were adjusted to begin with. And then at the bottom, you can enable the mask and preview it. And this will help you luma key any um, areas that you'd like to come through. This could be helpful with a nighttime shot, like a driving shot where you'd like the lights that are passing by to bleed some color over, um, over your foreground. So to jump into my other example, you will see here that uh, previously I used the old ex edge extension and I was using KeyMix to blend in certain areas. If we look at or bypass this and go to just a pre-malt um, and a copy of the alpha, you can see this edge that we have. And that's what that edge extension has done. The old edge extension could really only extend a very blurry result. And that's the biggest difference between the new one and the old one. So I put down an edge node. You'll see these four inputs that I previously passed over. Um, previously, you had to plug everything in, even if you plugged in every single uh, foreground and background node into the same thing, it would work. Now that is not necessary. You can plug your foreground, your background in, and it will start to edge extend. The reason why you'd want a key and a core is if you have semi-transparent pixels and edge doesn't know where to start from, you can maybe multiply that result up and make those pixels solid. Um, or if you had something like a rope that was swinging by and has no solid pixels, you could use uh, your roto non-motion blurred and motion blurred um, and put those in there. So basically the core is trying to define where there's a solid alpha channel and your key is your, your final key that never gets adjusted. So right away you'll see that it's almost grabbing too much detail here. So sometimes you may actually want to blur the slice width right away. Also it's grabbing that light edge and extending it. So our slice starts should start at least a little bit further in. You can see this dark edge is now present. Blur it just a touch. And then we have this harsh edge here. So we come down here into this blend and we can soften the transition very low results needed. This blur will bring some of that brightness in. And the smoothing, as I said previously, will just obliterate details. So use this one sparingly, or not at all. So once we have this, I can show you the extend chroma only. So you can see that his skin tones here are being extended. The blue of his shirt is being extended, but all of the detail exists there instead of it looking like this. Exponential edge extend softens more on the outside, keeps detail closer. And then where we had that pre-multiplied result, we can fix any darkening that was happening. Putting this to final for now, so we can jump in and take a look at the blending. So as soon as we enable this, you can see the blue from the background starts to bleed through. 
Let's preview the edge that it's using. It's using a very, very tight edge here. So let's expand that inwards a little bit and soften the fall off. Now we can see that it's a little bit too contaminated over his ear. If I mix this foreground luma, you can see that all the detail, it almost looks like he's gone transparent, is gone. So what this does is keeps all the poor details and everything in there. You can mix that result back so we have a little bit less. We could come in and adjust the color so more saturated, less saturated, lift it. And we could mask it so it's only the bright areas. So if I preview the BG input, I can do this. So we just have the bright areas. If I enable it, now we're only really affecting any of these bright areas. And there's not really much going on. That is it for Edge. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the updates. Please send me any feedback, info. If you have any suggestions to this, I'm very open to it. This tool would not be where it is today if it wasn't for feedback or being used in production by artists that I work with. Thank you.